What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Off the Couch Boxing. I'm your host, Reckless Rex Ruger. That's the Alexis Arguello puppet. And I'm your other host, Frank Benjis, and we're back with another one. And old friend of the show coming back on here with some exciting news. We'll get him in here. Let him tell you. I want to spoil the party. Do we got him? Do we got him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There he is. Oh, My yeah. old friend. Uh, 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 we lost him there for a minute. No, no, Where no, is no, he? I got you. Where there he is. Cold what's blood. What's up, buddy? Hey, listen. I'm out here with my family. Okay. Yeah, my family in the background. Look. Hi, fam. What up, fam? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we out here. Hey, listen. This is just like Adrian Brown. I got my crew, too. I know. Hey, and listen, man. Yeah, but Adrian Brown's uh, uh, crew is full of a bunch of shooters. <laughs> oh, he got shooters and killers. I, I ain't got nobody like that. <laughs> we, we entrepreneurs. I'm not so sure he does either, but I mean, he likes to talk like he does. But, but so listen, the reason we're revisiting this episode, and of course, you're a friend of the show. We had you on already, man. But, you know, let me catch our viewers up, though. On, uh, and, and let me get this right now here. Five days ago, Cold Blood Clark, our guest here, posts on Facebook that he wants to get back into the sport, wants to get back to what he loves doing. And uh, f well, f he wants two tune-up fights and then the Battle of Ohio with Adrian Broner. And, yes. That's, Am I that's, factual that's, about this? That's that's, oh that's the plan. You know, the plan is uh so my uncle is in Virgil McClinton. He uh used to be with Don King. He has a great relationship with Don King. He's called Don, reached out to Don, talked to Don. Don got a response, he got a response from Don. And he Don said, Hey, listen, let me reach out to Adrian Broner. Once I hear something back from Adrian, I'll let you know. But in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and get in shape and have a couple of fights and then and, and go from there. What do you what do you think about Adrian Broner just getting pot shotted and laid out by a by a, a phony boxer? You know what, man? When when you a talk a lot of sh when you talk a lot of shit and you can't back it up and you and you're going off your past history of what you used to do and you still can't do it no more, it shows. And that's what that's what happened. It shows. You know, Adrian was a great boxer back in the days. No I doubt. Was talking to my family about that. He was a great boxer. Legendary you know? chin. Legendary chin. Listen, and he just you know. He's the one to be Mayweather. So, you know, and and and, and there you go. It showed for itself. You know, one thing about yeah. Mayweather, Mayweather don't lose. Right, right. And we all know that. So 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 I I I'm curious because you said on your post you didn't want any feedback, which I assume like means people trying to talk you out of this or anything like that. How do those you know, being as that you are with the fam right now, how do those closest to you feel about you coming back over the age of fifty? Well, my friend, I mean, my friends and family love me to death, and they like Mike. You, know, I think he retired too early. You know, he retired, and you know, you had fun with it. You know, I, and I'll be honest with you, I, I start, I stopped having fun. And that's the reason why I retired. I miss it because you know certain things can piss me off, and I want to fuck somebody up or beat somebody up. I can't do that because I go to jail, right? So I'd like right. to get back in the ring and get back to doing what I used to do. That's my outlet. Was. Was the fight with that Adrian Broner recently had with Blair Cobbs? Was did that give you confidence to sort of make this call out? Like it's a dude I feel like I could beat. Not 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 only confidence, but it also gave me a little closure to him being an asshole representing Ohio. You know, I yeah, feel like yeah. you know, when, and my cousin just said this: you embarrassed Ohio when you represent Ohio. That's a that's a big that's it's like Ohio State. You know, yeah. I'm not an Ohio State right. fan. We know that. But when you represent in Ohio, you got you to represent. You represent Columbus. You represent Cleveland. You represent, you know, uh, Toledo. All the little far parts right. of Ohio. So, Adrian Burner looked bad. He, he made us look bad. Like, we looked some suckers. And all that shit talking he do is, I never, if you look at any of my film, I never shit talk. I just go out there and perform. Right. Adrian looked bad, man. He, he, he wanted to be Mayweather so bad. He don't got the chips, and he ain't got the skills. Now, where do you arrive at the two tune-up fights and then Broner? Do you feel like that's the right number? Now, now, your last professional fight was 2017. Are you worried about ring rust? Do you feel like you need two fights? Do you need more than two fights? How did you arrive at the number two? I to, do you feel like if you did one fight and performed well that you could scrap the second one? Nah, you know what? You know what? You know, you know. One thing about me, I'm I'm, I'm cool, calm, collective, and, and I'm a I'm a I'm a achiever, and I think I need two fights. 
you know, uh, one fight, I, I, you know, I can do that in the streets and beat somebody up, and I still won't feel good about it. But right, you know, two fights, maybe three fights. But if Don King jumps into this mix, I'll get three good fights, three slick black fighters. That's you know, that's sort of like Adrian Broner. I think he might be, oh, what is he, five five? You know, he's a yeah. dwarf. So you know, I'm gonna fight a couple of dwarfs that's slick, and and I'll, I'll be fine. Now, I feel like this is kind of out of character for you because you just alluded that you don't talk trash, but I feel like you've got a little bit of an edginess to you, well, right? Well, you know, hey, I, everybody knows me. You know, when I was on The Contender, I told you, I said, listen, the referee told me one time, hey, stop talking. I'm a talker. I'll talk about your girlfriend. I'll talk about okay. your mom. And I'll let you know I had sex with them, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, in the ring, I'm a, I'm a dominator. You know, I like to talk shit, but Adrian Broner talks a little bit more than what I would do. Like, I don't talk to commentators like that. I don't talk to, you know, I don't talk talk to guys about having sex with their girlfriends, and I don't do that kind of stuff, man. He's he just, he just a real ignorant dude. Once even I'm told pretty, the beloved well, once even told the beloved Jim Gray that he would be 7-0 and in his next seven fights if he was fighting Jim Gray. Come on, fighting Jim Gray? I'm going to put him in this place, man. Trap. I'm 50 years old. I'll put him on my lap, whoop his ass. And now, do you feel like now? Do you feel like uh, uh, you know at the press conferences because he is known as such a talker? Do you feel like you know you have to kind of come out of your own character and be a talker to really sell this fight? You know what I'm gonna do, man. I'm gonna wear a grand. I'm gonna wear a grandpa sweater. Okay. With, I'm gonna come out with a cane or a okay. walker. <laughs> I'm gonna make myself look presentable. I'm gonna put a wig on, a, a gray wig. I'm gonna make myself look oh, just lay him normal. I'm gonna whoop your ass. Like grandpa was supposed to whoop their kid. I'm whoop his ass. And and and, and if, so go, go ahead, you, Benji's. You, like what like when we're talking about the shit talking Adrian Broner does, what do you make of like in this last fight hit like like he alluded to before about the shooters and all this? Like, what do you make of that? Like, oh, if you if you say this, I'm gonna have my guy shoot you. Like, you think that's a little too far for boxing? Is that what you're speaking? Is that what you're speaking of? Like when you say representing Ohio bad, the gangster kind of man, talk in the thug a uh, actions. My my family here, we ain't all super clean. You know what I mean? When I say that, we're not all super clean. But what I'm saying is this: that's that's bad. You make you make you make yourself look bad. And if I was the first 48, I'd be watching that. I'd be listening to that shit. Find sure. out some unsolved murders that happen in Cincinnati. You might yeah. be a part of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. You saying too much. And if I want to, if I want to, Adrian Broner's guys, I'm like, dude, you saying too much. You need yeah. to shut up. Yeah, that might be the sign of uh, maybe taking too many shots to the head, incriminating yourself. He just do streets. He just do streets. And 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 so suppose uh, uh, so uh, are you saying two tuna fights, Adrian Broner, and then that's it? Suppose it went extremely well. Could you be uh, lured back into potentially furthering your career beyond this fight? Honestly, I'm a, I'm gonna go further than this. Honestly, so I hope this I hope this all get publicized. So honestly, once I beat Adrian Broner, I'm gonna call out Sean Porter. Okay, out of retirement. I retirement. I, I mean, I'm retirement. He's young, he's younger than me. I, you know, I remember Sean Porter's dad coming to my gym, doing uh episode of uh, what was that show called? Uh, something about changing people or what was it called? Okay. Oh, yep, yep. Yeah, remember that? Remember that? Some some about change or something like yeah. that. And he made some girl become a boxer, and he was telling me about how good his son was, and yeah, you know, his son would give me some competition. So. I'll be Adrian Broner. I'm calling Sean Porter out of retirement. And is there any animosity with Sean Porter? Is there anything personal between you guys? I like Sean Porter. I think Sean's a great fighter. I think Sean, re I think Sean re retired early. Uh, I think most of it is because of his father, though. His father, you know, he's one of those guys that, you know, ambition for his kids is a lot, but he's a little bit too much. He's also, I think Sean Porter's dad is borderline like, uh, uh, what's my man's name, who just lost to... Uh, Garcia. Oh, Devin Haney. Devin, Bill Haney. Devin yeah. They, they, them dads are the same dads, man. They're yeah. Same. Yeah. Over, overachievers. You, you live it through your kids, man. Stop living through your kids. So you as a guy who coaches young children, do you believe that sometimes uh, 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 the parents can become uh, involved to the point of being obnoxious? And ha have you had to deal with that, uh, you know, in, in your own, I've, own I've dealings? Had, I've had guys come in my gym with their kids. I say, hey, listen. If you want to train your son, take him home and train him. Don't come to my gym and train him. Yeah. 
he, he brought him here for me, right? So, <laughs> but you know, they they just get involved, but they're nothing like. You know, uh, Andy's father. They're not like Sean Porter's father. Both of those guys are too much. Yeah, I agree. Now, matter Wait. of fact, matter of fact, those two should put some gloves on and fight each other. Yeah, amen <laughs> to that. I know. Well, I, I'm pretty sure Bill Haney was pretty close, I think, with uh, Bernard Hopkins, which I don't know what he was thinking. Hey, Bernard Hopkins told him to meet me in the bathroom. He never went to that bathroom. Did no, he? no way. No. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 uh, so. Dad was a little premature with the towel against Terrence Crawford. He did go down a few times, but, you know, I thought he was still in that fight. Don was fighting a good fight against Bud. He was. Yeah, he was still in it. Yeah. I think you may be onto something there, but, we, you know, with him stepping away from the sport, a, uh, you know, a little too early. So where did this come from? I'm very intrigued. You know, I'm 51 years old. I mean, I, I know you're over 50 years old. You know, you're plugging along in your life. You got a beautiful family. You know, you're doing God's work out there, helping keep these kids off the street. Where did this come from? Just hit you out of the clear blue one day? How, like, how do you, you reach this epiphany? I've been thinking about it for a long time. You know, you know I'm, I'm still in shape. You know, I'm still around. 150 156 i'm not i'm not i'm never a big guy i don't, I don't eat crazy i still kind of diet myself um you know uh of course i love the ladies and i i eat crazy sometimes but you know all that can be tamed you know i can always you know tame myself and you know and i got a good following in detroit so my man john lee Peck in detroit uh tommy hearn i still talk to these guys on a regular basis and they're like listen man come up back come back to detroit get in shape We'll pull your uniform back out the closet. Let's get busy. Yeah, imagine yeah. what Cold Blood Clark would do if he laid off the pussy for a little while. Well, I know. You know I, unstoppable. Unstoppable. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> let's, not take it to, let's not take it that old school, right? <laughs> are, 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 are boxers still oh, abstaining? Uh, they should be. I mean, I mean, I'm, should I, be. I, believe, I, I believe to the roots. I believe in not having sex. You know, I believe in, um, you know, having a full two months of just training and yeah. being and not having sex and swimming and running and training my ass off, man. You know, I'm going to Washington, Pennsylvania, uh, to college around there and, and get busy. Yeah. Now, what about the kids that you teach? Uh, uh, you know, have you expressed your desires to the kids? And are they excited to see their, uh, you, you know, their 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 coach essentially? I haven't, I haven't talked to them yet, but uh, Buster Douglas got a son named Artie Douglas. That's a, a great young man, 29 right. years old. And I, I've been trying to talk to Artie in the boxing and let him know that, hey, man, your father's name is very important. You can get a lot of money boxing. He's a great fighter, but Artie's interested in training my kids while I'm, while I'm uh, ready for this fight. Okay, so the kids will not suffer. The kids will be in good hands. They'll be in good hands. The kids will be. And, and, and uh, you know, once the fighting is completely out of your system to the point where you're satisfied, you will return to that passion, correct? Absolutely. You know, I believe my job. I'll let my job know I'm taking the leave of absence and um, I'll get myself in, in great shape, man. You know, one thing about me is uh, um, when, I, when I'm, when I'm focused, it's all about me. I'm, I'm my biggest critic. You know, you can't tell me it might be like shit. I already know. Yeah. I'm my biggest critic, man. You know, I'll, I'll make myself, I'll push myself. You know, I don't need a family. I don't need a dad. I don't need Floyd's father or uncle. I don't need none of that. I, I sparred Floyd and uh, Johnny tacos him in, in, in Vegas one time. And, you know, I pushed myself. Flory had like six guys with him. He had, he had Roger with him. And we sparred and we started out light and we started going heavy. And these guys wanted to fight me afterwards. And Flory was like, man, that's my man, Mike Clark. He's an OG. Like, he's good. Don't yeah. bother. Him. So, yeah, yeah I, I I work to my to my ability. Okay. And so uh, uh, when you announced this on Facebook, you know, as I alluded to earlier, you said you didn't want any feedback or people talking you out of it. Despite you making that statement, did anybody come forth and try to talk you out of it? I had a couple of people say, hey, man, they hit me on my inbox and say, man, you're 50. I said, okay. What does that mean? You know, uh, uh, Ho was um, um, a foreman when he came back. You know, uh, yeah. it's about how you feel, man. I feel good. And, and, and my thing, my biggest thing, you guys, is I don't want to have no regret. I don't want to turn 55 and be like, man, I should have did it when I had the chance. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I want to go where I feel good. And, and you know, and if I, if I mess up, I mess up, you know. I, just, I, I found out what it was like, but I don't want no regrets. So to sort of to sort of switch gears, but sort of stay on topic, I guess, Mike Tyson set to take on Jake Paul, got moved back to November. He's well over 50. Like, 
And you said, you alluded to the fact that over 55, you wouldn't want to take this chance no more. What do you think about him trying to do, make that, you know what I mean? Make that. Yeah, he's closer to 60. Yeah. I, I think Jay Paul, I think Jay Paul going to beat his ass. I mean, and I say that, and respectfully, respectfully, I say that because Jay Paul's a young dude. Tyson, you know, you know, I read his book. Uh, you know, he's been so many drugs in his body. You know, he still smokes marijuana. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, he, he's got some. He's got some trauma. He's got some. Uh, he got some issues, man. And I just think that Jake Paul, and you know, and, and and besides being in Columbus, you know, Buster Douglas put the blueprint on his ass. Yeah, he, he did. The behind the strong jab, you beat his ass. Um, uh, my former teammate Lance Lewis beat him up also. So yep. Yep. Uh, I think, I mean, you know, the, the, the proof is in the pudding, man. I think Jay Paul will get out on his ass, man. He, even though Jay Paul fought some ex football players, a couple of guys off the streets, Jay Paul's he's legit for, for a big guy. Yeah. He, yeah. I'm proud, and I'm proud to say, Cold Blood, since the last time we had a conversation, me and my dad have both given up marijuana for the Yes. Best. We have. Yeah. That doesn't mean we're coming off the couch anytime soon. We're not coming out of retirement like you are. We're going to stay put right where we are and do what we do here. But <laughs> health is wealth, I'm saying health is wealth. Yeah, health is wealth. Yeah. Uh, hey, listen, when I tell you I'm healthy, I'm still light, I'm legit. And besides that, if you see my following on Facebook, I got so, I got like two, two, three hundred people backing me up, you know? Yeah. And what I'm gonna do is, what I'm gonna do for this fight, I'm gonna make a a road trip for this training camp. I'm gonna start in Youngstown, Ohio. Well, actually, I'm gonna start in Columbus with my own my own adopted dad, Matt Bochlini. Okay. My uncle Johnson, my uncle, and then from here, I'm gonna go to Youngstown, Kelly Pavick's gym. When I leave Kelly Pavick's gym, I'm going to Crump, Detroit, my homeland, Detroit. My and Stewart birthday coming up July seven. Yep. I'm the eighth. I'm the tenth. I'm going to Crump. And then from there, Ivan Robinson, who beat me in Olympic trials, called me today and said, man, come to Philly. I got some young boys to spur with. All guys we I'm know and love. To, I'm about to get ready, ready. Just yeah, all, guy, all guys we know and love. We were just at Hall of Fame weekend. We we, uh, we hung out and, and chatted with Kelly Pavlik for a little while. Supposed to have him on the show here in the next couple of weeks. We've had Ivan Robinson on. Great guys you're surrounding yourself with. But do you have a specific person in mind, specifically when you come back and step into the ring to train you for these fights? Do you have anybody in mind? Uh, I'm going to start with my father, Matt Votellini. You know, I'm going to bring his ass out of retirement, too. So, okay. Matt. You know, he's my adopted father. Uh, he's a white guy. He's a uh, uh, northern Italian. Uh, been with me since I've been 12 years old. Brought me in and never turned his back on me. Don't start talking about shooters around the Italians now. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Putting some mafioso around you. Hey, but why y'all here once again? I want to show you my little young cousin right here. Please. Yeah, there we go. What's up, bro? There he is. What's up, man? How you doing? Hey, listen, man, uh, 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 you know, as, as part of Cold Blood's family, are you proud of him getting back into the ring at his age? He looks fantastic. No, no, no okay, friend day. Uh, no, he's crazy. He said no, friend day. He, <laughs> hey, he's crazy. He's crazy. <laughs> we over here. Hey, this is my cousin, Red. Welcome to the man. Boxing. Yeah. They're going to put on for Columbus. <laughs> yes, thank God somebody is, right? We got to stand up for Ohio, man. We got to stand up for Ohio against the Adrian Broners of the world. Stand up. Making you guys look bad. I know. It's not good. It's not a good look. It's not a good look when you're getting up at boxing press conferences and talking about shooting people. One doesn't have to do with the other. That's not a good look. And then getting knocked down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, not hey, not just knocked down, but your tooth knocked out. I mean, come he on. And, yeah, uh, and lose a tooth. Yeah, he gave, he gave him eat. He gave him eat, did he? Yeah, yeah. And 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 so I got it. I got to ask. Uh, uh, did you pick up anything when you're watching Broner? And of course, you don't got to give the game plan away. I wouldn't expect you to. But did you see anything in that Blair Cobb's fight that you've kind of that you kind of tucked away in your mind? I'm, I'm, you see, I'm, I'm just gonna tell you like everybody else says. He don't throw enough punches. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, you yeah. took the words right out of my mouth. Doesn't let the hands go. Yeah. yeah. One thing, hey, if you hey, if you ever said he ain't my fights, which I'm sure you guys did, sure. I throw over 100 punches around. Yeah, yeah. Adrian Brunner throws five punches in, in the flurry, and that's it. You know, that's it. And, yeah. the and I think he's like five five. I'm going to. I'm listen, man. <laughs> it's going to be fun. 
Hey, you seem like you've got a fire tonight in you. This feels like watching that Rocky movie where Rocky came out of retirement to fight Antonio Tarver. Right. <laughs> they had some stuff in the basement, remember? <laughs> sweet, man. It's going to be so sweet. And hey, while we're on the topic of low volume, uh, we just recently uh, saw the doubleheader of Benavidez and Vozdik and Tank Davis and Frank Martin. And Tank is another guy that doesn't really throw anything, but he just keeps somehow finding a way to cherry pick these guys and, and put them away. What, what do you think about that? Of that, that I fun? think Tank is strong, man. You know, I, I'll be honest with you guys. If I was 135 still, you know, uh, even when I was, you know, when I turned pro, I think Tank would have would have took me too. He's strong, man. Yeah, he's, strong. he's a he's a stout guy, man. Um, you know, but but to go back to my days, you know, I think um, I think Arthur Gregorian would have gave him a good fight. Yeah, the one thing I was impressed with with Tank Davis the most, though, and I've gone back to watch the fight, uh, fight again. What he does, there's no wasted energy with him. He's constantly, he's not wasting punches, but he's always applying pressure, though. You know, like just with forward movement on the front foot, he's always coming at you, and he's letting you. He let Frank Martin seem to expend a lot of energy, but it was, uh, but it was him putting the pressure on, though. And without one, at one thirty-five, I think Tank would have beat Mayweather. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, they're obviously calling for uh, uh, his next couple of fights, possibly. Uh, there's some names uh, uh, in the works, but they're saying right now Bob Arum is working on, uh, in November, uh, Tank versus Lomachenko. Lomachenko too far past his prime to, uh, uh, to put up a good fight? He's not going to beat Tank. No? You don't think so? Breaking my heart, but. I would love to see that, but he's not going to beat Tank. Yeah, I would what love about, to see that, too. Oh, oh, Shakur. Uh, nah, it's a great, so it's a great idea, man. I mean, yeah. honestly, man, but you know, it's, boxing is like this. It takes styles to beat certain people, man. And neither one of those guys got that style to beat this guy. This guy's going to come at you. He's got, he's got, you know, lead in both hands. You know, I don't know what's going to take to beat that guy. He's got to get older, I guess, but this guy's a monster. I, now, I, I think the biggest problem is with him campaigning at 135. He's just tough to beat there because the guys that could beat him are a little bit bigger than that. I believe that too. I believe that too. Yeah. They're yeah. not the same. And I, I do kind of like, and, and I do kind of like what he's doing because Calvin Ford said they have a very old school mentality. Because you know, you, you mentioned Broner being small. You know, Tank Davis is only five foot five too. I think his designs are to stay at one thirty five and do like the old school fighters do. Just keep cleaning that division out and not and not really worrying about going up or down in weight. And it makes sense. It makes sense. It makes a lot yeah. of sense. I think, Tank, I, I think Tank is right where he belongs right now. Right. So I, I think if he went to 140, he would have a problem with a lot of different guys. Yeah, I think he would too. Who's, yeah. there, who's at 140 you think he had a problem with? Uh, Tiafimo. Maybe Tiafimo. Maybe Tiafimo could give him problems. Uh, uh, Jesus. Uh, I think if he fought Ryan Garcia at 140 with no rehydration clause and Ryan was able to go to 150, 154, he would probably have killed him. Yeah. Because yeah. size doesn't play. matter. And now, what size do you, and now, what size do you plan on being when you do come back and fight? What would you like to fight Broner at? A uh, uh, catch weight? A certain a certain weight class? I don't think he'd make 140. You think he'd make 140? What did he fight? Yeah, 150, 150? 154, right? Nah. Like, what did he just fight Cobbs at? What did he just fight Cobbs at? Was I it 147? I thought I think they fought 147, right? Yeah, yeah. they just fought, yeah, I believe they just fought at 147. So I, I could fight I could fight 40 or 47. You okay. could probably you could probably get them to catch weight though, 40, 44, 45. Yeah, something like that. Is there a specific is there a specific weight that you in your mind would like to be at for this fight where you feel like you'll do your when best I, work? When I, when I sparred when I sparred Chavez back in the day, Chavez told me to fight 130. Or I fought 135. When I sparred Eric Morales, he told me to fight 130. I was in one, yeah. 135. Um, you know, I, I I didn't really hit those guys because we spar. I spar, I spar light. But I'm going to come back at 140. I think 140 I'll be good at. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, so do you feel like you've got enough – animosity built up with how disrespectful Broner was for, uh, you know, for the state of Ohio, or do you feel like you have to build more animosity towards him? You know what? Broner's going to bring the animosity towards me because he's so ignorant. You know, you yeah. got so they're just ignorant, man, and I'm not going to use the word 
the term everybody used for people. Right. I don't know what it is, but he's definitely that guy. And yeah. uh, he's going to bring he's going he's going to bring the heat. Uh, you know what's so funny is ironically my my nephews are in their in their, in their early forties and they went to Cincinnati and they went someplace and they went to the restroom and some guy told them, Hey, you can't come to the restroom. Adrian Broner's in there. They was like, Who's Adrian Broner? They, they ain't no way to go to us. <laughs> and they saw this guy, and my nephew first said, you know, I thought this necklace was fake, but you know, they were obviously real. But he's like, Dad, he said, Oh, this guy was a little dude, man. He's like a little yeah. dwarf. Yeah, he's but, yeah. Know, I have fun with him. My jab, my, my jab perspective will eat him alive. And I think that is the key to beating him, though, man, because, uh, uh, you know, the people that have had success with him, and I think back to even a guy like Paul, Paulie Malinaji, not a big puncher, but a guy with a fantastic jab. And even though Paulie did go on to lose a close fight with Broner, though, that was a very competitive fight. And all Paulie really had is his best weapon was his jab. Yeah, I'm a jab. You know, him in the fight. I'm a jab to death. Yeah. Oh. I hope this fight turned out, you know, like I said, my uncle reached out. They said they're going to run across Bron. I hope Bron look at my videos and be like, oh, this guy ain't, she ain't shit. I, I, this, that'd be beautiful. Yeah. I kind of I kind of think, I kind of think it's funny that they wouldn't let your nephew go in the bathroom because he was in there. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, what, what's, what's he doing? Choking the chicken? Right. <laughs> <laughs> And I think it's funny, too, because I was just watching, uh, you know, I, I kind of went down a YouTube rabbit hole, you know, because you had called out Broner. And when I was getting ready for this interview, I did watch a lot of stuff. And I somehow came across some documentary about Broner early in his career. And people really were drinking the Kool-Aid back then. Everybody from Max Kellerman to this one and that one, they were all saying, wow, the, you know, this guy is the next, you, 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 you know, he's the threshold of the future once Mayweather hangs up the gloves. And he never really turned out to be. You know what, man? I, you know, I'm I'm a, I'm gonna I'm just tell you guys. You know, when you talk to announcers, when you're on public TV, you can't be you can't be so rude. You can't be so stupid. You like, I, you know, and, and he learned that from Mayweather. And, and Mayweather really ain't, isn't that guy, but but he, but he is, I guess. You know, uh, sort of say, but that bullshit ghetto talk. You know, disrespectful. It's just played out, man. You make yourself look so stupid. Yeah. And no respect for you. And that's why they call me the N-word. You know what I mean? Because they look, they, they act like that. It looks stupid. You got no respect for yourself. No respect for your camp. You know, and then you got your dad in there with his fat ass brushing your hair. Like, yeah. What is that? What is that? Yeah. Yeah, the brush of the hair was always very cringy, what? I got to say. <laughs> in the ring with a towel, buffing my head. Like, come on. <laughs> with like a sham wow. Even uh, though I don't got no place to talk about that, but I feel like what you're talking about is a disrespectful word for ev for everybody. It is. It is. Yeah. When you're, on TV, when you're on TV and you're disrespecting, you know, these commentators, man, and you saying the F word and the B word and I'll have sex with your girlfriend. And yeah. That's just ignorant, man. It's no, taking no, it too far. It kind of, at some point, it, it ceases to become trash talk, and it just becomes nineties boxers. We never touched each other. We never, we never talked like that on TV. We never did none of that stuff, man. Now, no, for it, people that, now, for people that want to know, uh, what's the timeline? When would you like to have this first tune-up fight? Are you looking at a specific time of of the year, a date? I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking at uh, what is it? Uh, it's, Looking at November from our okay. first. Okay. No specific opponent at this point. Well, I want a slick young fighter, uh, African American. I want him slick. I want him coming at me and, and, and preferably undefeated. I want him 16, 17 and 0. Let me, let me okay. find, you know, I'm, I'm already, out there. I'm, I'm already, I'm already seasoned. So let me find out what he got. Yeah. Maybe I'm going to get, get enough sparring in Philly and Detroit. That's that that let let alone is enough to get. You're ready. going to the right cities, yeah. You're going to the right cities to get the good work, without Absolutely. a doubt. What about, what about a guy like Frank Martin? Just caught his first L. About that weight, slick, quick, young. What is he? Eighteen and one. Yeah, yeah. You know, Frank might be a little too much. I, I, I'll probably go a little lower that for my first fight anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For my first fight anyway. This would be this would be safe. My first fight anyway. And then Frank Martin, I might see him my second, third fight. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, you know? and, and of course, you know, before we let you out of here, you know, I certainly want you to promote your worthwhile, uh, you, you, you know, work you do like with the kids and like, where can people in your area find you if they want to bring their kids to you? So I'm at, I'm at, I'm at, uh, in between fifth Avenue and Leonard, uh, on St. Clair. Our address is, uh, seven, one, one, I'm sorry, seven, seven, one St. Clair Avenue in Columbus, Ohio. And you know what? I charge these kids eight dollars a session. I know you're doing great work there. You're doing great work for people to pay give for. Back, give back to my community. Somebody has to do it, man. Yeah, somebody did for me. So you know, look out for babies. Keep them off the streets. Keep their minds clear. And you know, if we're gonna roll into school. You know, it's gonna be after school program. You know, let that energy out. Let that negative energy out. You know, if you want to fight in school, come in my gym and push that bag up. I love that. Now you dropped the address now. So what if Adrian Broder decides to show up? Just come to where you are and show up. If you show up, we're gonna get smacked up. Trust me. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. We gotta have a little bit of clickbait here, Cold Blood. We gotta, you know, I know you're not the shit talking type, but we gotta pull a little bit out of you. Adrian said he got his hitters. I got my hitters there too, because I got the I got the family. I got women and men, they was jump on his ass, trust me. Okay. With the hey, baby. Adrian, uh, A B, it's best you stay away, man. We, we just wait and see cold blood in the ring. Absolutely. Listen, man, you know we're pulling for you, man. We love you. You're a friend of the show, man. We appreciate you coming on here, man. Anything we can do to help you, help promote this, when you start getting fights and stuff, man, let us know. Come on and promote, man. You know, we're here for you, man. You guys are fabulous, man. I, I watch everything you guys. Ever since my, my first interview, I'll watch what you guys do. You guys are fabulous. Appreciate you, man. Thank you so much, man. It's good talking to you, man, and good talking to the fam, man. Have fun out there, man. All right, my brothers. All, All right. right. Stay in touch, my friend. Thank you. Yep. There he goes, folks. You heard it from the you you heard it straight from the horse's mouth, man. Calling out Adrian Broner right here. I feel like that's an exclusive. Hey. He posted that five days ago, and I'm pretty sure he hasn't gone public anywhere else other than Facebook, man. So uh, Cold Watch Blood Clark, Michael Cold Blood Clark, calling Watch out AB. Watches everything we do, man. Battle the Battle of Ohio. AB, you done fucked up, man. The guy's in Columbus. You're in Cincinnati, but guess what, baby? It's all Ohio. The man takes you know, the man takes his state seriously, man. The fam, as you can see, man, backing him up. Those around him, those closest to him, nobody's trying to talk him out of it, man. Fifty years old, man. Man's on a mission. The battle of the O. Shout out Makai Pfeiffer. Yeah, the battle of the O. Yeah, and you know what, man? I mean, you know, he's a loyal, dedicated friend of the show, man. We've had him on before, man. And uh, if, well, first of all. Uh, if this isn't getting you to tap in and like and subscribe, because nobody's bringing you uh, some of the interviews that we bring you. Nobody's bringing you a, a, a live video uh, interview with Greg Haugen. Nobody's brought you Lamar Kid Fire Parks. Nobody's bringing you Michael Cold Blood Clark. Nobody's bringing you some of the most amazing boxing content. Well, there is one place. It's fucking here. And guess what? Even if they were, they don't got the, 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 the rapport and the friendship that we got with these people. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's all about you. Know, you know, it's all about letting them shine, man. And 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 that's why I didn't want to let uh, Cold Blood out of here, man, without putting some shine on the great work he does in his community there, trying to get the kids off the street and into the boxing gym. And like he always says on his Facebook page, man. Uh, you know, for people that uh, uh, you know aren't aware or don't follow him, though, man. You know, he does run a a, a, a gym there, as he said. He he charges you know minimal dues. Uh, he, he's got kids from all ages. I've seen him around there working with very small kids. Uh, he makes it affordable, you know, you know what I mean? Depending on like your means and your ability to pay him, he's not all about the money charging you some crazy, you know, gym rate, you know what I mean? You, you know, to, to, to truck your kids in there and train them or whatever, you know what I mean? You, he'll work with you. He'll work with you, man. And, 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 you know, he's helping the next generation of kids. I, as a parent and a grandparent applaud what he does and everybody else should too. He's also a patron saint of boxing. Shout out uh, to our man, Iceman John Scully, another patron saint of boxing, you know, you know, trying to give back to the boxing community, man. And he's doing it in spades in, in his area, man. He he's carrying his load and then some. Yep. And I'm going to say right now, shout out Michael Cold Blood Clark. Like yeah. and subscribe. Tap that notification bell. Watch out for Michael Cold Blood Clark because he's coming back, especially you, AB. Yeah. Watch out because that yeah. man wants to shoot. And also, shout out Gary Busey. 
because I can go 15 seconds with anything. And aside from hitting the like and notification bell, man, make sure to like and follow us. We're on Facebook, man. We're out there. You can find out uh, all about the latest content, what episodes are going to be coming out, what episodes are currently out, man. Uh, you can tap into a lot of the people on our friend list who are people that we've had on, people in the boxing community. Uh, uh, you, you know, obviously without our guests, we wouldn't be anything, man. Uh, we've been blessed. We haven't even been doing this a year yet. We're 120 plus episodes in and have had guys on the come up, uh, and, and amazing legends, you know, and everything in between, man. So, I mean, you know, stay tapped in, man. Uh, this is the best boxing conversations anywhere on the planet, man. This is where people in the fight game come to chop it up uh, like you haven't seen them before, man. We just kick it here, man. We kick it with your favorite fighters uh, and your favorite just people associated with the fight game, man. So stay tapped in. And remember, if you want to be a champion, you got to roll with the champs.